piece of advice you'd want to do is sketch an angle of what we're looking at. So it says a ship is heading due north. So again, I'm talking about bearing. So I'm just going to draw. I'm going to say, all right, you're heading due north. So here's north, east, south, west. So you're heading due north at 12 miles per hour. Now, what should 12 miles per hour, like if we have our direction, remember a, a, a vector, if we're going to represent a ship as a vector, we have magnitude and direction. We have our direction heading due north. So what do you think 12 miles per hour is going to represent? Magnitude. The magnitude, right? 12 miles per hour is our magnitude. The next one is you have a current. Now think about that. The current is flowing southwest, 45 degrees, um, southwest, so south, 45 degrees west, at 4 miles per hour. Right? Now that's slowing down your ship. Wouldn't you guys agree? Mm -hmm. And it's also kind of pushing you west. Yes? And you guys have been in boats or in airplanes. Like you guys kind of have somewhat of an understanding. Like you have the flow of waters pushing you this way. That's going to slow you down. Right? Unless you obviously increase engine speed. Right? So what they're asking us is find the actual bearing and speed of the ship. So we know from our understanding of resultant vectors, if we kind of do the tail to end method, like here's going to be our resultant vector. It's going to be shorter than our original vector, and it's going to be farther to the left. Now, what is it? I don't know. Let's, we're going to have to figure that out. Okay. So first of all, wouldn't you guys agree, though, the resultant vector? Look at what we did in class. Or actually, let's write out our two vectors. So let's do a vector of the ship. Let's call that s. So the thing of the ship is we know its magnitude, which is 12 miles per hour. And we know the angle that it's flowing at. What is the angle that, that is going for due north? It's 90 degrees. Now, in terms of bearings, that's an angle of 0. But should, your calculator doesn't know the difference between bearings and standard form, right? Yes? So we have to connect the problem in bearings from the problem in our standard form. We can't plug in 0 degrees into our calculators thinking the calculator is going to know that's due north. The calculator knows 0 degrees in a bearing as 90 degrees. So we're going to say cosine of 90 degrees comma sine of 90 degrees. Now, I could calculate that if I wanted to, because this one isn't that bad to calculate. Um, typically, though, a lot of times it's just easier to leave things in your calculator and let your calculator do all the work. But this isn't bad, because we know on the unit circle that's 0 and that's 1, right? Yes? And then you could multiply that, so it would be 0, 12. Wait, what? Oh, wait. Cosine of 90 degrees. No, I'm, I'm talking about the, like the graph. Like how you... All I did was I took this vector, and I put it up there at the end. These are like the same vectors. Oh. Like you like slide it to the end. The tail to head method. That's the tail, that's the head. That's the tail, that's the head. So you take the tail to the head. And you said the 12 is the magnitude? That's the magnitude of your original vector, of your ship vector, yes. All right, now let's make a vector for our current. So our vector for our current is going to, has a magnitude of 4. And that angle. We don't want to use the bearing. We want to use from standard form. So from here to here is 90, plus another 45 is going to be 135 degrees, right? If you're going to go in that direction. But that would be negative, right? Could you use a negative or a positive? Yeah, could you do 180 plus? Could you do 225 degrees as well? Will it matter? No. So let's do 225 degrees. From here to here is 180, plus another 45 is 225. So that's cosine of 225 degrees times sine of 225 degrees. Now, can we just multiply that 4 into both of those? Could we multiply the 4 into both of those? Yes, we could. Scalar multiple. Do we actually know what the cosine of 225 degrees is? Think about it. Negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, negative square root of 2 over 2. Right? So actually, when I multiply by 4, that's actually not that bad. I could actually do this without a calculator. Ooh, that'd be a good problem for you to give without a calculator, Mr. McCogan. And you guys don't need, I mean, a lot of, we, you will have a calculator on your test. So this isn't something we would need to be doing in our calculator. Um, but this is going to help us by simplifying this. 
This will help us with our plugging in our calculator. So here's our two vectors simplified. And then, guys, if I want to find the resultant vector, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the components like your warm up. You add the first components and you add the second components. So my resultant vector is going to be 0 plus negative 2 square root of 2. Second component is going to be 12 plus negative 2 square root of 2. Wait, how do you know, how to, how do you know you're using the 90 degree angle? Because due north is 90 degrees. It says your ship is heading due north. Okay. Due north is 90 degrees in Stanford. Okay. What is, like, why does it say due north? It means you're traveling. That just means your direction, like you're heading due north. Like you're, heading, you're facing due north. Like it's, okay. You're facing north, and you're, that's the ship you're heading in. Um, somebody steal my calculator. Can I use your calculator? Okay. Now, if you weren't able to simplify these, make sure your calculator would be in degree mode. Okay? You want to make sure you're doing that? And then over here, I'm just going to simplify this. I'm going to do negative, well, so this become that. This one's easy. Um, so negative 2 square root of 2. And then this is 12. Oh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Um, OK. Is going to be then 12 minus 2 square root of 2. So that's my vector in simplified form. However, I'm going to do some calculations. I need to find the actual speed. That means I need to find the magnitude as well as the direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate this, and I'm going to store it. So I'm going to do negative 2 times square root of 2. Negative 2 times the square root of 2. That gives me negative 2.828. I'm going to store that as alpha a. And then I'm going to do 12 minus 2 square root of 2. And I've already showed you guys how to do this. And I'm going to store that as alpha b. So when you calculate this, I have, um, I'm not going to write down all the digits. But I'm storing this as a over b, or a comma b. Okay, and if you need help storing, just let me know. But the reason why I want to store them, guys, is because if I want to find the speed, right, the speed of the ship is what? Remember, it's written there. It's the magnitude. So that means I need to take the square root of a squared plus b squared. Well, it's much easier if I have these stored as a rather than using all those digits, right? Because we don't want to use a rounded number, correct? Yes? Correct. We don't want to use rounded numbers, so we're going to want to store them. Um, rather than writing them all down. So I'll say the square root of alpha a squared plus alpha b squared. And let's see if this answer makes sense. I get 9.59, and I'll round this, 8. We're at miles per hour. Does that make sense? If you're originally traveling 12 miles per hour, but you have a, um, a current that's at 4 miles per hour in the opposite kind of direction, that slows you down to 9.598 miles per hour. Does that make sense? Relative sense, right? Yeah. yeah. And then we can find the angle. So now the angle, remember, is tangent inverse of b over a. Right? And that formula is already provided to you over there. So I'll do tangent inverse. Make sure you're in degree mode of alpha b divided by alpha a. I get negative 72.86. Well, that doesn't look right. Should it look like my angle is going this direction? If I'm going due north and I'm going that way, should I be going down there? No, right? But remember, that's because the calculator is restricted. So what angle kind of make does what angle should make sense? Well, positive 72 would be over here. Right? But again, guys, this is giving you the acute, this is giving you the reference angle. Yeah, so it'd be 180 minus that angle. So it'd be 180 minus that answer. And no, oops, 180 plus 
negative 17. I'm getting 107 degrees. Theta equals 107.139 degrees. And that kind of makes a little bit of sense. That's past 90 degrees going to the left. That one makes sense. Okay? So just remember, guys, when you're doing the in, when you're finding the angle, you gotta understand the reference angle and what angle that's giving to you, and then what angle makes sense. Okay? Thank you. You guys like that? You want to do another one? <laughs>